you up this. Yeah, buddy. Here we go again. Five hours and we're finally down here in Hood River yet again. We are back, we are back, we are back. I'm so excited to be here. This trip's gonna be a little bit different. I mean, we literally just stepped foot out of the hospital for the last five days. It's not a big deal. My son, three years old, diagnosed with type one diabetes. So you can bet your bottom dollar there's gonna be some type one diabetes fundraisers in the future. But we're back in Hood River. We're bringing my sons out with me this trip, one kid each day, and we're gonna try to secure six spring Chinook out of some of our favorite fisheries down here, guys. We are at the Holiday Inn Express this time, and it's a little bit bigger room, so it fits our family a little bit better with everybody being here. We have seven people total, and so thank you guys so much for tuning in this episode. Let's go bonk some freaking fish together, guys. Let's go do it. Me and my son, Wind River, Reno Lake, catch you on the water. Got down to the boat ramp at Wind River at 3 a.m. Me and my son Nash, and we're out here chasing giants today. I was down here two weeks ago with the wind, got confident, maybe got a little cocky, and I got me and Nash stuck for like 30 minutes coming through the channel back there. Not once you pass the bridge, just once you leave the boat ramp. Um, it's a lot lower than it was a couple weeks ago and I should have accounted for that. I should have checked the water levels and stuff like that, but I didn't. But hey, we made it out. Boat's a little muddy, had to get out and push it. You know, people are probably laughing at me, but that's all good. It's part of learning, part of life. Never stop learning, guys. And so we're out here. It's still dark, as you can tell, and we are in the spot right now. So we're getting ready to rock and roll, and we'll catch you guys soon. All right guys, so we just did our first troll and we trolled upstream. Now we're trolling back downstream. So we're going a lot faster downstream than we are upstream, which is like I've talked about in videos prior. Um, so when you're going downstream, we're roughly going about, we're going like 2.4 miles an hour with a drift sock out headed downstream right now. So we're looking pretty good. And hopefully we can get you, get you guys on top of the fish today. Pretty wet day but we're trolling 2.4 miles an hour downstream right now. And we're going upstream, we're going about 1.2 miles an hour, but we have that current pushing against us. So hopefully we get Nashy into a fish soon because my boy's tired out here. As you can tell, even in the rain, my son will 100% fall asleep. So this year right now, it's a little bit interesting because last year when I was fishing this fishery and we were catching a lot of fish off the kayak, we actually weren't fishing the same lines that we're fishing right now. So it's pretty interesting to me because we're actually fishing a little bit different part of the wind down here this year, which is cool. A little bit deeper, a little bit more of a straight line. We're not doing the circle anymore around that log on the point down there, so. But man, liquid sunshine, God's country, baby. Let's go get a fish.
Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. We'll give her one more pass each. Gonna change these baits out soon, guys. I like to run about three passes, three and a half, four passes before I start changing out bait. And we're on our third one right now. So after this third one, we'll go down, we'll go back up, and then on the way back down, we'll change everything out. So I like to keep everything super fresh, and I like to be very particular about the coon shrimp that I do use. I like the whiskers nice and long, and I like a medium-sized coon shrimp. Sometimes they want, I, th I throw a small one on there every once in a while just to see what they're gonna like and what they're gonna eat, but Usually I'm just running two rods. So if I can find a nice medium sized coon shrimp with nice whiskers on it, I'm gonna use it. Man, this place is beautiful. It's so pretty. 100 came over. 2,500 fish came over the dam yesterday. We just got the update right now, guys. So we've been seeing a lot of fish caught um, so far, probably like 10 fish so far but the number is 2444 for yesterday. So it was 1600 two days ago. Yesterday was 2444. So that's looking pretty freaking good. When a fish hits, it's gonna be now, if it's hitting the bottom, it's gonna be like this. Tap, 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 tap. That's the bottom, right? But a fish is gonna be, okay? So if you see that, then you start screaming, fish, 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 okay? And then how about I grab the rod for you, and then I'll hand it to you, okay? Yes, I'll reel in the other rods, okay? You just gotta be. Huh? Well, you still want to clear the rods though, just in case, cause, because the fish runs this way, it's in all the lines. And each one has a 12 ounce piece of lead on it. So it's like, if you don't clear it, you're probably going to lose the fish. There's something on the wing. Some thing. <laughs> Like what? What's that, brother? Hope we don't get stuck on the way back. <laughs> Bro, I'm never coming out here in dark like that again. Yeah, that was crazy, dude. We got stuck. We were stuck for like 30 minutes. <laughs> I did. I I jumped in the water and pushed our fucking boat. I know. It doesn't get worse than that, right? I mean, if you start the day that bad, you can only go up from there. What are we at depth wise? 22 feet? Yep, there you go. Now pull a little bit, pull a little bit. Push, 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 push. There you go. Now you're cooking. Yeah, go to that green drift boat right there, see? See how it's green in the middle? Over here. No, this one right here. Uh, oh, fish, fish, fish. Yup, fish. Put it. Here, Nash. Nash, Nash, Nash. Real, 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 real. Okay, 
Keep it out to the side. Okay? Nice steady reels. Yep, nice steady reels. Keep it right out here. Keep reeling. Lift. No, no, let it run, let it run, let it run. Okay, lift. Reel. Let it go, let it go. Reel, reel. Reel, 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 reel. Reel. Reel, reel, reel. Keep reeling, let's go, reel. Uh, maybe. Yeah, it's here, it's here. Reel, reel, reel. No, stop, 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 stop. Big lift. Lift, 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 lift. Lift. Yeah, buddy. Woo! First salmon, baby. Let's go. Dude, give me some. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Glad we stayed? Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Good job, dude. Woo, look at that beast. That's the biggest, that's the biggest really ever Let's go, dude. Reel that sucker in. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Good job. All right, guys, so again, what an absolute insane chaotic, absolute nutty day that we've had so far. I mean, it's two o'clock right now, as we said, and everything was working against us. I mean, we got up at 3 a.m. It was not supposed to rain. It's pouring down rain, which the rain doesn't bother us that much. That's fine, no big deal. We get down here, They've the water's come down in the Columbia River just a little bit, and And so it made getting out of the Wind River boat ramp pretty difficult for us, right? We had to get, I had to get in the water this morning at 3 a.m. and push the boat and bury myself up to knee deep in mud, just trying to get out here. And then we hit a log coming out after I was pushing the boat. So I had to get out again and then push the boat some more and then paddle with our net once we passed the bridge. So coming out here before daylight with a prop man not a good idea for us but we got out here finally the wind kicked our butt we saw a few fish caught early morning guys we did see a few fish caught and that gave us hope plus 2444 came over the dam so we were thinking oh my gosh i mean this is going to be it we're definitely going to get doubled up we might even get two which would be our limit for the day obviously and so we were really confident and it just didn't happen. Did it happen? Did it happen? Did it happen? Watch people catch right behind us. Watch people catch right in front of us. And I was looking at my setups that have been tried and true and we've used so many times before. And it's just one of those things that where, you know what I mean? We, we finally just said, you know, screw it. Start talking, just hanging out, not worried about the rods. Next thing I know, I glance over and the rods just pinned, blah, 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 blah. And then Nash, my son, freaking first Chinook salmon, first salmon other than a kokanee that he's ever caught in his life. So, I mean, proud dad moment. Thanks to God. And it's just a blessing to be out here. But let's talk about the setups that we utilize today. Of course, you guys all know it. Huge fan, huge supporter, short bus flashers every time I go out on the water. I don't care what color of short bus you're using. They're just as fishy as all get out. And I've never used a better product in my life to get out and target Chinook salmon, especially in the fisheries that utilize 360s or triangles. I mean, it's just an absolute, I mean, kudos to JT, honestly. So next we have the meat and potatoes of the setup itself. I run six mil beads on all my beads. And this is a VIP outdoors um, Colorado blade. And it's one of my go-to setups out here. Um, obviously, Simon makes a great blade. Brad's makes a great blade. Um, I know, I think Yakima Bates even makes some uh, Hildebrandt type, type blades, so on and so forth. But these VIPs have been working for me this year in the Mexican hat uh, color formation, just like so. And then of course, it's just six mil beads down to the non-slip mooching rig. 
If you guys want to learn how to set any of these setups up yourself and everything that is involved with them, just go over to my channel, Walking on Water, and you guys can utilize the videos over there on um, all of these setups that I'm showing you here today, okay? This is by far one of the best setups you can use while 360 fishing with prawns, okay? Absolute killer setup. The next setup I'm gonna show you guys, the next setup I'm gonna show you guys, this is a six bead formation with just a Mac Lure 1.5 smiley blade. And it's a really subtle presentation in the water. So when everything else is thumping, thumping, thumping with those 3.5s, excuse me, this little guy just likes to glide right through the water, make a little shine and sheen, and the salmon just cannot resist it, guys. All right, guys, here's Nash's fish, an absolute freaking specimen of a spring Chinook, especially for his first one. I mean, just iridescent chrome, the giant spots on the back, a 2 p.m. Chinook. Everybody loves to catch an afternoon Chinook, especially after a super slow morning. And I mean, what a special environment for him to be in to actually catch this fish, right? Me and his first Chinook salmon trip out together and not to mention, he had a bunch of boats around him cheering for him, for him and hooping and hollering when he caught it, asking to reel up rods. So it's just a complete controlled chaos situation and what an epic journey for him to get experience spring Chinook fishing just like this. This is what brings our next generation guys into the love of fishing and it's memories and moments just like this. So thank you Lord so much for just the opportunity to be out here. And man, oh man, what a gift and what a fun day we had. Well, how about you, Nash? How do you feel about it? I feel so good. You feel so it's good? the best. <laughs> He's hooked. I mean, you can't, if you can't tell that. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of Walking on Water. Me and Nash, it's 2 p.m. We're going to go sit in the hot tub for a while and enjoy and reminisce about catching this beast in the water today. So catch you guys in the next one.